Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about seven benefits of having an LLC. And if you've been following this channel for any period of time, you'll know that LLCs are pretty much the bee's knees when it comes to, uh, yes, I said that, <laughs> um, I, when it comes to business entities because they are so amazing and they give you so much benefit for a uh, very little amount of effort. So um, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Taylor Darcy from Think Legal. And I am here to help you create the business of your dreams. So welcome. I look forward to getting to know you. And uh, please feel free to leave comments. Uh, we go live every weekday, except for holidays, 11 a.m., to answer your questions and to just hang out and find out what you need to help your business so that not only can I help you with it, but that you can get real answers to your questions. So please join me, if you can, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Monday through Friday, uh, uh, obviously, except for holidays. The number one reason why a LLC is, has significant amounts of benefit is that it is a, it's a hybrid organization. A, a sole proprietor, you're taxed on your earnings, your revenue, period. That's just how it is. So whatever you bring in, minus your expenses, uh, that's what you're going to be taxed on. The... The same thing is true for an LLC. In fact, a sole member LLC is what's called a disregarded entity for tax purposes. The IRS looks at it and says, nope, that income goes straight to the person. And so you, it's, it's what's called pass-through taxation. So you're not running the risk of double taxation, which is what's true in a corporation. So that's really one of the, the big, big reasons that you want an LLC is because of that pass-through taxation. The, it gives you the benefits without the downside of a corporation. It's, that's, it's, it's almost perfect. It's not completely perfect. It's, not, it's just very, very good, very, very close. It's, it's also similar to if for a, a multi-member LLC is similar to a partnership. And, and it runs similar to a partnership. So keep that in mind. It has LLC rules, but for tax purposes especially, it's the same thing. It's 50% it's of the profit is distributed unless otherwise agreed on. So it's, it's very, very simple comparatively to a corporation to start, to manage, to things. And, and it provides you with perhaps one of the biggest benefits, and this is why you would do this for a sole proprietor in a partnership, is it provides you with limited liability protection, which the typical version is that you are limited to the amount of money that you invest or property that's invested into that entity. So the best example I can give you is if you have an LLC that's done for a rental property, then you the only thing that's at risk is the home that's in the rental property or that's the rental property rather than your personal assets, especially if you have multiple homes uh, or multiple rental properties. And so one of the questions I get asked quite frequently is, should I have one LLC and then have all my homes in it? Or should I have an LLC for each home if I have a rental property? And the, the very easy answer is that you should have each home should have their own LLC because then that way, that's the most that they can attach assets if there was ever an issue that you needed to worry about that with. So that's, that's the, the easy answer to that. Now, each situation is different. So don't, uh, you know, keep that in mind that you want to make sure that you're, you're consulting a, a CPA for your accounting needs or you're consulting a attorney for your legal needs because otherwise you could run the risk of doing something like this is just general overall advice for you. So keep that in mind as we discuss these issues that your state may have specific differences that may make one better than the other. Um, <clears throat> the other, the next part of it is not only does it, it, it pass through taxation, it's easy to operate. It protects your personal assets, as I said earlier. So especially if you have like a 401k bit of, uh, or, or any other type of, of substantial assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. If, if you were to be sued without an LLC or a corporation for that matter, 
then they could attach to your personal assets. Big thing you want to avoid. Benefit of uh, an LLC is that it's easier to transfer or sell than a sole proprietor or a partnership because it's an actual entity. The entity owns all of the product or services, the products, the assets, uh, real property, uh, tangible property. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday in buy, or, or in previous video about buying and selling a business. With an LLC, if everything is owned by the LLC, it's a simple transfer document to, to transfer it as opposed to you would literally have to transfer all the assets and everything that goes with it into another entity in order to transfer. So it's a lot more work, especially if you're ever considering, and I mean ever, considering transferring your ownership to a different person. Like you want to retire and you want to sell your business, it's always better to have it as an LLC than it is to try to do it as a sole proprietor. So if that's something that's on your horizon, you know, yesterday is the best time, today is your next best time to start that, to do this. So you really want to start looking at your goals. And if, if selling it is going to be part of that, you want to make sure that you're preparing now because it only gets more complicated the older you get. And, and that's why you need to sit down and talk with the, an attorney for business planning. Um, that so that we can help identify your goals and then make it so that you're getting what you need to to reach those goals. The other thing that is very advantageous over a, a sole proprietor or partnership is that you can get investors if needed. You can bring them on as part member or have a position. It opens the door to getting more money. Now, a lot of investors are going to ask for C Corp and can always convert from an LLC to a C Corp. But especially if you're beginning, that might be a little premature. So keep that in mind that it depends on the investor and depends on the type of money that you're getting. So don't, don't think this is a, it's just easier than. As a sole proprietor, you're limited to debt only, pretty much. There's no real equity investment. And so it's, it's less expensive. Debt is always less expensive than equity, but it's, it's harder to get from a, because of the risks that go with debt. Just... It, it just is like lenders are harder to get than equity holders for uh, for additional capital. And that's that's crucial to know, because, again, this is about planning for your future and not just winging it. And if you're planning on it or if you need investors, then you're definitely going to want to set your business up for that type of success uh, so that you can make sure that you're taken care of. In, in those instances. So sitting down with an attorney and giving them uh, exactly what you need uh, can give you the, the best outcome for the least amount of money because we can, there's a, we can fix a lot of things. But the problem is, is the more difficult it makes it or it gets, the more likely it is going to be that it, co it costs more money and it's just more complicated overall. So it's always better to start out one way with the goals in mind than it is to try to keep going through them and, and not doing that. So just keep those, those thoughts in mind. Another benefit of having an LLC is that the contracts that you draft and or are a party to are between the LLC and the vendor or the customer, client, whomever, as opposed to you and them individually. And, and so this is kind of a subset of the liability protection but it also keeps it on a business level as opposed to you as a person. And some businesses are want to have a, it, it reassures them that you're a business entity and not just a person because it's harder to become a business entity than it is to be a sole proprietor or partnership. And so that difficulty, uh, and it's easier to find you because you have to, the, the, the things that you have to do with the secretary of state and whatnot. So keep that stuff in mind as you're doing this, that it's, it's always, you know, if, if you're looking for contracts, it, it's easier to get contracts through an LLC than it is from a sole proprietor for that reason. Then the, the last part of it is legitimacy. People look at LLCs and look at corporations, I mean, specifically LLCs as being more legitimate and can help fuel uh, your business because they're, they look at it as you're taking your business seriously. You're not just a hobby. You're not just doing it as a side hustle. You're doing it as a business. And, and so you're giving them the best opportunity for trust, right? People like to do business with businesses that they trust. And part of that is 
hey, establishing yourself as a business to say, I am a business. And so an LLC gives you that additional boost that you don't get as a sole proprietor. You also get some benefit of regarding like naming, for instance. As a sole proprietor, you're limited to something that includes your name. As a, you can do a DBA, but that gives you new liability protection. And, but with an LLC, it's protected at the state level, which means that not everybody can have it at that LLC. You would have, you're the sole beneficiary of that LLC. Now, that doesn't answer the national protection, which is done through trademarks. In some of my other videos, we talked about trademarks and the benefits that go with those. So keep that in mind that you need something nationally and a trademark is a great way to go, best way to go rather. But as far as like statewide, a DBA is done at the county level, an LLC is done at the state level, and then a trademark is done at the national level. Now, you don't necessarily need a DBA if you have your, your name as your LLC. So just keep that in mind that there's, this is why it's so important to talk to an attorney in your local area to make sure that you're getting exactly what you need when you need it and for the purpose that you need it because what you don't know can cost you substantial amounts of money. So keep all of these things in mind. But LLCs are an amazing way to probably the best, closest thing to having your cake and eating it too, so to speak, in the business world. You're, it's just so diverse. It's, so, it's a new entity. Corporations are what most people are familiar with. And so there's this misnomer or misunderstanding that corporations are better. And that's not necessarily the case. That's not necessarily reality. The reality is, is an LLCs are very good for most every, every company, it, especially starting out. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to stay that way. You could grow and get to the point where you need a corporation and you might transition into that. And that might be a difficulty, but you, because you didn't know that that was going to happen. For most businesses, I would say a good 80 to 85, maybe even 90% of all businesses are perfectly fine as an LLC that you just don't get otherwise. And so you really want to keep these things in mind as you're developing your business that, you know, just because you start out one way doesn't mean that you have to go that way, that you can, that there's lots of easy ways to change it. Uh, it is a little more complicated, but you really want to keep that that the flexibility in mind and, and you don't know what you don't know and so the idea being that you know consult with a cpa for your accounting needs and consult with an attorney to make sure you're getting picked with your best entity and and here's another uh, tip in regards to llc's you can also and this is probably like the best bonus tip this is one of the other reasons why an llc makes a ton of sense is because you can actually uh, designate yourself as an S corp as well, which is a tax designation, not an actual corporation. All corporations are C corps with a, and some of them are S corporations, but with an LLC, you can enjoy the pass through taxation where all the income, uh, all the revenue minus expenses is passed through to the individual, or you can do an S corp as well and give yourself, uh, some other tax benefits. Now that's a question for a CPA. It's I just know that it's possible to do your S corp uh, for your LLC. So it's again, it comes back to ease and flexibility, and giving you that oomph you need to keep your business going, um, and and really develop it into a full blown company. Right, you start out as a sole proprietor, and it's easy, but it doesn't give you the same. Uh, long-term benefits as starting out as an LLC. Now, I know this video was about benefits, but I have to mention, at least in California, one of the downsides to LLC is that you, because you're a business entity, the Franchise Tax Board charges a minimum of $800. And that is just a fact. That's just the way that it is. So you really want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Now, the, the approximate revenue point at which you would be paying that tax either way is about $24,000. So if you're meeting your annual revenue of about $24,000, which hopefully you should, you would pay that anyway as a sole proprietor as you would for an LLC. So keep that in mind. And again, that's approximation. Everybody's tax situation is different but that's a minimum tax in California. So you want to be super duper careful that you don't, uh, you're not doing it too early uh, or that you're not, rather I should say that you're not prepared for that minimum tax because that could hurt you. 
um, because the FTB will f will suspend your right to do business uh, in the in the state. Um, so, you know, if if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to leave them in the comments. Please uh, like and subscribe for for more. I I go live weekdays, Monday through Friday, except for holidays. So uh, I hope to talk to you soon.